Welcome back into another episode of the Huskers Radio Network podcast. I'm Jessica Cootie, and it is summertime, which means it is time to bring back our newcomer series, introducing you to the new Huskers that are now on campus. And we are starting this thing off this year with women's basketball and Amaya Hargrove. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So one of uh, three freshmen that are going to be joining Husker women's basketball, you're out of Christopher, Illinois. So I just want to, you know, spend some time getting to know you a little bit and, and your recruiting story and, and let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. So let's start there. You're recruiting. You, you had all kinds of offers. You're one of the top recruits in the state of Illinois. Illinois recruited you. How did you land on the Huskers? Take us through that. Um, it was kind of un unexpected, honestly. Uh, they were kind of just like in my back pocket the whole time, you know, and then I came here on a visit. They were my very last visit, um, an official, and I just fell in love with it. And I was like, yeah, this is where I want to go. Um, so I committed uh, the day before I left. So it was just kind of a whirlwind, but it, it was the best. So, so you, I got to imagine you probably came into it thinking I'm going to take my time. But when you were here, I mean, what was it that you said, OK, I cannot wait. I've got to commit while I'm here. Yeah, um, just meeting the staff um, and the whole team. They just made me feel so comfortable and so welcome. And it was just a very genuine connection. And that was really big for me when I was looking for a school. Um, so when, you know, I kind of got that feeling like when you know, you know. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I got that, I was like, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be. So. So you committed even before your senior season. How how important was that for you to be able to maybe just concentrate, get the commitment over with, know where your home's going to be and, and be able to play your senior year? Yeah, that was huge for me um, because just the recruiting process is kind of stressful, yeah. um, especially as like a young athlete. So really just going into senior year, not having to worry about it and just being able to like enjoy my last year at home was really big. Um, so having that out of the way was like the best thing ever. <laughs> So from Christopher, Illinois, which is a small school, you pay, played for the smallest classification, right? In yes. a high school in Illinois. Yeah. Tell us about Christopher. What is that town like? Yeah, um, there's not much in Christopher. Uh, you know, no stoplights, just a bunch of stop signs. Um, it's a very close community, just being small. Um, but athletics is pretty big there. Basketball was really big. Um, my junior year, we went to state, and we were the first team to go to state. So that was huge. It was really cool to see just, like, the whole town rally around you. I um, mean, even a lot of supporting area schools. It was really cool. Um, but, yeah, not much to do. Just real small and um, very tight. So, I mean, that's really all I can say. <laughs> just... A lot of good people. You talked about the athletics. You played basically every sport, right? I mean, track, yeah, softball, much. volleyball. Mm -hmm. How was that being able to, to compete in all those sports? It was really fun. I made a lot of good friends, especially from other schools. Um, and since we were so small, it was a lot of the same girls playing the same sports. Um, so we all got really close too. We became more like sisters and just like classmates. Um, so yeah, it was really fun and got to make a lot of good friends uh, through the air just because, you know, there's we were playing schools that are 10 miles from us. Um, so yeah, it was just a really cool thing to see different relationships grow. We always, we talk a lot about that with athletes here. How important was that for you to play multiple sports and how did that help you, I guess, become the basketball player you became? Yeah, um, I think it definitely helped just like not getting burnt out because basketball is so, it was year round, you know, you go from school to travel ball, um, but having different sports in between was kind of like a stress reliever almost. You know, I treated volleyball as like my fun, just like go out, do whatever. You know, if you had a bad game, you know, you're still upset, but it wasn't the end of the world, you know, as much. Um, in basketball, it's more of like a business. Um, and that was what I was focused on. So it was fun to do other stuff, kind of let my body move and relax in different ways. Um, so I think it's really important for, you know, high school athletes to do multiple sports just because that way you don't get burnt out. Absolutely. You played shortstop, right? Yes. Yeah. That's my mom, awesome. My mom always said I was the world's tallest shortstop. So, <laughs> so rank the sports after basketball then for okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Volleyball is definitely number two. Um, okay. Probably softball than track. Uh -huh. I was a short distance runner in track. I ran like the 100, 200. So it was never too bad, but still running, you know, sometimes it's like, uh, so, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it was good. I played, I only played softball for one year. Um, I played like travel ball when I was younger Then I played all through grade school. And then once I got to high school, I was kind of burnt out from the travel ball thing. Cause it's like constant. Um, and it was just a lot like starting basketball too. So I got back into it my junior year, and I had a good year, but um, this year I wanted to focus more on basketball just because I was going to be leaving soon. So we play softball in the spring. So how did you come to find the love for basketball then? If you, you, know, you played all these sports growing up, why basketball for you? Um, it just kind of happened, honestly. There was never like a real defining moment where it was like, this is what I want to do. Um, I started playing in third grade. We had like a little third and fourth grade tournament, um, and I just – 
I was like, okay, yeah, this was fun. I did it again the next year. And then in fifth grade, I got to play. I played varsity for our junior high team. Um, and that's when I think I kind of was like, okay, I could really be good at this and I really enjoy it. Um, so I probably started taking it like seriously in sixth grade. That's when I started travel ball. Um, and yeah, it, I think my love just kind of like progressively grew. Um, there was never like a, this is what I want to do. This is it, you know, from a super young age, but it just was something that kind of constantly grew as I got older. So you became the, your high school's all time leading scorer. Um, what was that like when you get that record? Uh, how was that journey for you getting to that point? Yeah, it was really cool. Um, TJ Wheeler, who held the record previously, he's a pretty good family friend of ours. Um, so it was kind of cool to see him like pass the torch uh, in a way, but it's just a huge honor, you know, and to be a girl to do it, uh, I think it's super cool. Um, and just shows, you know, other young girls that there's something to strive for and that, you know, you can do anything a boy can do on the court. So um, it, was, it was just like, really exciting for me. So I gotta imagine every team did everything possible to keep you from scoring, but yet you were still able to do that at will. So how, how did that work for you being that, I mean, again, everybody was trying to keep you from doing that, but yet you were still able to do it? Yeah, um, I think it was just finding different ways. You know, if they were triple teaming me in the post, maybe pulling it out, uh, trying to score on the outside. And then when they did, maybe trying to beat them to the basket. It was um, a lot of quick thinking usually, and my teammates were really good at um, trying to get me the ball when I was open. Um, and they were also really good. I could pass to them and they could hit a shot too. So it took some of the pressure off me a little bit. Um, but this year, my senior year, we played with a lot of younger girls, a lot of underclassmen. So trying to get them kind of in the, kind of teach them the ropes of, you know, high school basketball while also, um, you know, trying to win games and be competitive. It was a little hard to balance sometimes, but overall it made me a better leader and a better person. So. So, you know, from a small town, a lot of people might say, oh, it's hard to be recruited there and, and all of that. But what would be your message to maybe a young girl that's from a small town that, hey, look, you can you can find a way to, to get a big time D1 Power 5 college offer? Yeah, um, I think just get on an AAU team. That's what I did. Um, I played out a team for uh, from St. Louis. Um, and Brad Billy, great program, great people. So highly recommend if you're from the Midwest, Brad Billy. Um, but yeah, I think just being on the circuit and working hard and you know getting your name out there, whether it's through social media or posting your highlights or um, any sort of you know camps you can go to. I think elite camps definitely help too, team camps, whatever you can do just to get your name out there. Um, because you know you can do it from a small school, and that's what I always told people was like, I'm going to do it from a town of you know 2,800. So uh, yeah. That's very cool. So your dad is Anthony Hargrove, uh, defensive end in the NFL, played what, almost a decade in the NFL, won a Super Bowl with the Saints. What was that like growing up with a dad that was an NFL vet? Yeah, it was really cool. Now looking back on it, I think I realized how cool it is mm -hmm. uh, more than when I was little. I was like four when he won the Super Bowl. Um, so being there, I obviously vaguely remember, I remember like the confetti coming down and being <laughs> on the field, but um, just like little things. I wish I was older to where I could have kind of remembered things and um, been a little more into the experience. Um, but now it's like, he's just dad. And, you know, people will go out and people will be like, oh my gosh, like, can I have an autograph? And I'm like, you know, like, why? He's, he's just my dad, you know? Um, so it's funny. I think as I'm getting older, I'm kind of starting to realize like how much um, of an athlete like that he really was. He was a freak of nature, um, still is honestly at 40. But uh, yeah, I think as I'm getting older, it's just cooler for me to see and kind of realize. And as I'm going through that process, um, just realizing how cool he really is and what he did and, you know, the level that he played at. It's it's crazy. Shout out, Dad. She now yeah. says you're cool. Yes, big shout out to Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the things that he instilled in you as an athlete, being that he did it for so long at the highest level? Every college football player, that's what they want to be and strive to be. So what were some of the things that he instilled in you as you were growing up as an athlete? I would say um, the top thing is just mental toughness. You know, you're going to have those days, you're going to have those moments where things get hard and just being able to push through. Um, and then also like getting clicking into that next level um, when you're playing or when you're working out, you're practicing, you know, whatever you do, even just in everyday life, um, just constantly striving to be your best at giving your 110%. Um, and I think just like work ethic, um, always, you know, like I said, giving your best, doing your best, um, just being the best possible version every day and trying to constantly level up and be better. Um, I think those are just the major things that he's always preached to me. And now it's kind of like in my blood and in my nature. So I'm really thankful for that. I know it was a different sport, but a lot of times when you have a parent, you know, that went on and, and played at that level can be some pressure. Did you ever feel that? How did you manage that? Yeah, um, I don't think I ever felt the pressure when I was younger. I feel like now that I'm in college, I'm like 
not trying to live up to my dad, but just, you know, going and trying to make him proud, um, saying, you know, my dad is a college athlete. I am too. My dad is a professional. Maybe I will be too someday. Um, but no, he himself never put any type of pressure on me, just always wanted me to be my best in whatever I do, whether it's school or basketball or, you know, being a good person. So That's very cool. So um, I noticed you are a pretty big fan of one Larry Bird. Yes. How is that? Tell us about that. Um, my grandpa, he's a huge basketball fan. Um, obviously, he watched, you know, Magic and Bird and the Dream Team and all that. Um, and that's my favorite era of basketball is like the really? 80s, 90s. Yeah, I think it's the best um he has the dream team documentary recorded on his tv i watch it just about every time i go over there um but really my grandpa i think started it and i love magic bird rivalry it's amazing um but yeah i think just watching old stuff with him kind of grew me into that and then we actually got to go to french lick last summer um my grandparents and then my cousin and i went and we got to see like his old high school um and we got to go to his house we stayed at like the restaurant or we stayed at the hotel ate at the restaurant um, we actually, when we got onto the court, there was like a back door was like held open with a little weight. And my grandpa, he coached, or yeah, he coached football at my high school um, way back when. So he knew like small town, you know, if there's a weight in the door, like somebody's <laughs> yeah. in there, it's open. Uh, so that was pretty funny. But we kind of snuck in there and their um, trainer was walking around at the top of the thing. And we were like, hey, we're not trying to, you know, intruder thing. We just wanted to see the gym. And she's like, oh, yeah, come in. And um, they got to talking. And my grandpa ended up telling her that I was committed to Nebraska and I would be here. Um, and she was like, really, my fiance, we're huge Nebraska fans. So I was like, small world. It was That's so cool. cool. But yeah. So you, what was it about Larry Bird then? I mean, other than your grandpa, what did, what did you like about his game once you started watching him play? Yeah, I think it's just his creativity. You know, he's an elite passer. It's so cool to watch his highlights and just how hard he plays. You know, he was constantly like diving on the floor or diving into the bleachers. Um, and I am not like this really. Like he was always like fighting or scruffing or talking. I'm not into <laughs> that but I think it's cool to kind of see other people and just the way that they take and the way that they work on the court um, even when sometimes it's different from you um, and so I've kind of taken a little bit of things from his game you know uh, here and there but yeah I like watching his scrappiness I think it's really funny that's neat that you share that with your grandpa because I mean it's just not something that you hear a, a story like that I mean that's got to be pretty special for you guys to get to share that yeah my grandpa and I are very close um, you, like I said, he was our AD, our coach, so he's been in sports his entire life. So um, he kind of helped when I was growing up. That was the thing, you know, everybody in my family played every sport. Um, so yeah, I think through sports, we got really close and we also obviously just have a deep connection just between each other. So I love him. So if Larry Bird is number one, who, uh, what other athletes did you admire, look up to? Um, who, who are some of your other favorites? Yeah, when I started playing basketball, I always loved Maya Moore, still do. Mm -hmm. She's a huge um, inspiration to me. Um, I really like Nafisa Collier also. Uh, Jason Tatum, he's a big one. He's from St. Louis, so and he played for the organization that I did. So that's kind of like a little connection there. Um, but I would mainly say them. So I noticed that your mom posted on social media when you were moving in that the social media account for Nebraska women's basketball posted some photos of you guys moving in and she quote tweeted it and said, gosh, she's so happy. How happy were you to, to get here on campus? I was so excited. I had been counting down the days, you know, um, I feel like the week before went really slow because I was really waiting for Sunday <laughs> to come. Um, but yeah, I was so excited just to be here and to get to work and to be around all these great people. Yeah, I was pumped. So you're living with the two other freshmen, Kennedy and Britt. How's that relationship been? You guys really, I mean, Britt committed last, but um, you know, how has it been getting to know them and, and developing those relationships? Yeah, it's been really cool. We talked a lot on social media um, before we got here, but I had met Kennedy um, when I came just to visit a couple weeks ago. Uh, we kind of hung out a little bit, but I had never met Britt. Um, but we, like I said, we had talked on the phone and stuff. So we kind of knew each other coming in, but you know, we've become best friends immediately. We've driven everywhere together, tried to navigate, you know, all the new stuff. So we've kind of been inseparable just being freshmen and trying to learn things, but yeah, it's been really cool. So losing a few pieces, but a lot of the, the squad from last year is coming back that, that made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Um, how has it been getting to know some of those, your new teammates, and uh, how excited are you to join that group? Yeah, I'm so excited. We had our first workout yesterday. We, Britt and Kennedy and I were all so pumped just to get in there and get to work, and Coach Williams gave us a great message in our team meeting. So, you know, you just are, like, buzzing with anticipation to get out there. Um, but, yeah, the girls are amazing. Um, they're a big reason why I chose to come here, just because they felt, it already felt so comfortable, and I felt such connection with them from the beginning. And then, you know, they welcomed us in with open arms, and we're all ready to work. 
So what are your goals then as a, a freshman to be able to come in, maybe make a, an impact and fit in with it, this program right away? Yeah, um, you know, definitely I'm sure I'll be coming off the bench, but just uh, contributing in any way I can, you know, hopefully getting a starting spot at some point would be great. Um, but I'm just going to come in every day and work hard and do what I need um, for the team to be successful, you know, whether it's cheering on the bench or passing, scoring, rebounding, whatever it is, you know, getting water, who knows. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to do my role the best that I can and um, just strive to be the best teammate. Seems like everybody that's on the bench, no matter when they are, they they join the bench mob, you know, yeah. the, the bench celebration. So you, uh, hopefully you're practiced up on that. Too. Yes, they're going to have to teach me, teach me some of the cheers. But yeah, it'll be good. So we have had a lot of people text in. I know that you've already got some Oscar fans that are excited you're here in this uniform. But for those that maybe have not seen you play or not as familiar with your game, tell us what you're like on, out on the court. Yeah, um, I'm very composed, very straight-faced on the court. You um, usually don't get a lot of emotion from me, whether, it, you know, maybe like and one or something like that. But um, I love the mid-range. My mid-range jumper is like my favorite. Um, I like to get to the basket. Um, I can shoot threes a little bit. Uh, I can do a little bit of everything besides point guard, you know. I'm a little, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but, yeah, and I'm going to put it all on the line for my teammates and for my coaches. So I'm just going to do anything I can. So where do you feel like you, you need to focus on your game to be able to, to transition to the collegiate level? Yeah, I would probably say just like adjusting to the speed will be a big thing too, you know, just coming from a small school especially. Um, you know, things are a little bit different where I'm from. Um, so I think just adjusting like speed and physicality, probably, you know, Big Ten basketball is very physical and it's intense. Um, so I think that aspect just with like the speed of the game. Um, but I think personally, just becoming a better ball handler, you know, moving without the ball, just figuring out where I need to be and, you know, uh, kind of growing that chemistry with my teammates, figure out their tendencies and they can figure out mine. So. Being that you are such a big sports fan and you come from such a big sports family, how excited are you to be a part of this athletics department, go to football games, all of that good stuff? I'm so excited. I've been telling my mom, she played uh, volleyball in college, so I'm so excited to go to a volleyball game, get to see football games, you know, the football team's on the up. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait. So we've talked a little bit about your mom, your dad, your grandpa, but you, you're probably your number one fan is little sister. Yes. Tell us about her. Yeah, she's seven. Um, she is a firework. We are like <laughs> polar opposites in personality, um, but she's my best friend. She's kind of starting to get into the sports world. She had a softball game last night. Um, but yeah, she is spunky. She is my biggest fan. Um, and she also will keep me very humble. You know, she's one that tell me like, you need to run faster. You need to shoot more. You need to, you know, do this and do this. So, but yeah, she's the best. So safe to say she's going to be up in the stands in PBA. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She will be the one yelling. She's got pom poms and everything. Yeah. So I'd be curious to hear too, just, you know, your perspective being from out of state and watching, you know, the attendance and the support for women's basketball here you know, what that means to you as someone coming in to be a part of that, um, you know, how, how much did that draw you into just, just seeing that and, and the atmospheres inside PBA? Yeah, it's so cool. You know, that's another reason why I loved it here, just the support that we have, especially um, being no professional team. So, you know, all eyes are on the college. Um, so I think that's super cool. And just being able to be a part of that, you know, and have people come up and say, hey, I saw you on, you know, TV last night. It's going to be amazing. So, and, and again, you're coming here not just to play basketball, but also be a, a student. And I was reading, you're going to be marine biology major? Yes, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, I've always loved animals and the ocean since I was little. You know, being from Illinois, it's pretty landlocked. So going to the beach was, uh, you know, like a once a time thing, once a year thing. Um, so, and I've loved sharks my entire life. My grandpa and I really? always watch Shark Week. Yeah, so I would like to specify in shark studies if I can, but, you know, as I've gotten older, the ocean just really interests me. Um, and so I just, I'm excited to, you know, learn more about it. And there's so much that we don't know, and that really also intrigues me, so... So I, I guess I didn't even realize that's a major here at Nebraska. Yeah, I was surprised when I came on my visit because, you know, choosing a school with that major, I figured would be a little bit of a challenge. But, you know, the whole academic team had it all laid out for me. And I was like, OK, that, you know, checks that box. So but yeah, they've got a really good team of like fish biologists and all that. Um, I will have to go to grad school. Yeah. Um, but while I'm here, I'll probably study more like environmental studies. And then um, marine biology is a really broad field. So I don't know exactly what I want to do with it yet. But, um, you know, as I go along, I'll probably figure that out um, along the way. Do you have a favorite shark? Uh, great white. Great I know white. it might be a little generic, but <laughs> I just think they're so cool the way they like jump out of the water. It's, it's 
awesome. So you, you mentioned the academic staff. How important was that for you as well when you're making des- your decision, not just the basketball program, but to be able to provide academically what, what you want to do as well? Yeah, it was huge, especially coming in with kind of a unique major, you know, finding somewhere where I could, you know, play basketball at the highest level and get um, a high level degree was really, really important to me. Um, and Nebraska checked both those boxes. So Very cool. Well, what else should Husker fans know about you? Um, I'm excited to get to work, and I can't wait to see all of you guys in PVA soon. Oh, I love it. Amaya Hargrove, great stuff. Welcome to Lincoln. We're so glad to have you here finally, and we cannot wait to see you out on the court. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Huskers Radio Network podcast, our newcomer series, and our women's basketball newcomer series is brought to you by Emeritus. Emeritus is proud to power all of Husker women's athletics. And as always, make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode right here on the Huskers Radio Network podcast.